Uh, we are live and back in for the Ashdown live sessions. How's everybody doing this morning? Um, just reaching out to everybody to see that we are all online. Good morning, everyone. Um, I've got, first of all, some materials to hand out. Page one. I need to make sure we can do this. Uh, hang on a second. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? <laughs> I'm just desperately trying to work out how to share materials in um, in the Facebook feed. I might have to use a different search engine. Just give me a second uh, because I want to make sure that you guys have got some notes that you can work from um, for today's session. And it's just some supportive notes. So basically you've got something that's referenced uh, and to help you out. So I'm just gonna try and drag these up first of all. And then uh, once we've done that, we can start actually actually doing something. So it's all good. Okay, just bear with me. I've never even shared a document in the thread live whilst I've been on air before. So I'm hoping it should be okay. It may not be. Who knows? Oh, this isn't working. How's everyone doing? Is everyone okay? Um, <laughs> happy Sunday. Sorry. <laughs> um, I am honestly trying my best just to see this. Basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to upload some materials to the thread so you guys can download. But at the moment, it ain't happening. Oh, this isn't working. All right, here we go. Let's see if How's I can do good? it. Is everyone okay? Um, <laughs> happy Sunday. No, every time I try and share it, it goes, nah, I'm not having any of it. Okay, all right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, um, once this session is finished, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some uh, support materials, okay, some support materials on uh, the With Base In Mind page. So if you go on, when I share this video, on the with base in mind page okay so <laughs> sorry what a catastrophic beginning to today's broadcast it's good um good morning how is everybody is everyone all right okay just to give you a lowdown what i was trying to do um i've done some pdfs uh some little support documents so that you guys can once you finish the lessons you can then um you know refer back to them and do some work the thing is though is uh i can't share it in the thread because it's just typing which is just ridiculous that's facebook being a complete bellend um so what i'm gonna do is pretty simple um what i'm gonna do is when this this live fee is finished okay please go to the with base in mind facebook page okay with base in mind facebook page this lesson will be shared and then in the comments on this lesson on there that's when i'm going to upload some documents so you'll be able to get some support documents for that okay um uh, so that's it so as soon as you're done here guys what you need to do is <laughs> leg it over to the with base in mind facebook page um and then in the comments below there i will share so some support documents to help you out with today's studies because there's quite a lot to soak up in this hour actually today's kind of like shall we say the more involved day uh so i think anybody that's kind of been with me all day yesterday they know that yesterday was pretty cool we did we did some good stuff we did some good work but it was all like you know it was it was pr fairly digestible it wasn't like we were just being absolutely um run ragged with loads of new materials but today is going to be a bit more involved so it's uh, i need to make sure you guys have got some sort of support documents right first of all let's talk about where we are um the ashdown isolation live sessions are all a, a massive thank you to you guys uh you guys have been absolutely awesome um last week ashdown uh did the nhs fest in conjunction with liam gallagher's uh manager raffled off a load of equipment a load of gear and made a monstrous one hundred and sixty thousand uh, pounds that has been contributed and put forward to our nhs so that first of all 
is a massive hats off, massive show some love uh, to everybody at Ashdown, Mark, Lee, Dan, the rest of the gang, everybody that's put this stuff together um, to, to really, uh, you know, make a difference against this fight against COVID-19. So that's absolutely fabulous. Now, if you want to support Ashdown, because obviously this is quite a hard time for anybody, there's um, a wonderful B stock section that's just been uploaded to their Facebook page. So if you're in the market to buy some new little bits and bobs, uh, there's some great amps on there. There's some great bases on there. There's Oh my God, there's so many things. I was just, I was like, Mark, just take my wallet. I want all of it. Okay. <laughs> um but those uh those that stuff is all at discounted rate. It's all absolutely brilliant. So get on there and check it out. Um if you're new to me, who the hell am I? Um well, some of you guys will know me because I write for Bass Guitar Magazine and Bass Player Magazine in the US. Um uh played for a whole bunch of guys. Uh, from Albert Lee to Van Morrison, Leo Sayer, all that sort of stuff. Got my signature bases, there they are, look at those, the overalls. But I've got a little link that some people aren't probably aware of, and it is with Ashdown. Um, it's actually with the management of Ashdown. Mark Gooday is the governor. Um, but before he was with Ashdown, he was with Trace Elliott. Um, and my very first ever endorsement here in England, way back in 1998, when I was a little spring chicken with a perfectly <laughs> not a crease in my face or gray hair or <laughs> any body fat at all like this little scrawny kid um when i my very first ever tour which was with a u2 tribute band um trace elliott supplied on my back line uh and that came through to my my greatest first teachers paul scott and rob burns rob burns was the guy he was like a father figure to me uh at the base tech music schools in acton in london now actually um as a little nod to those guys as well, I've just uploaded the first ever bass song I've ever learned. Would you believe this? Um, now, when I was a kid, when I was starting out, um, uh, I was absolutely potty on two bass players. Okay, so what was it? The first bass player was a chap called Norman Watt Roy. Norman Watt Roy um, was a bass player for Ian Jury and the Blockheads. And the second bass player was Dave Peacock. Um, Dave Peacock was in Chaz and Dave. Great, great British duo over here, but surprisingly awesome, absolutely awesome levels of musicianship. Whenever you listen to that stuff, you find me, oh, okay, you know, they're all sort of knees up, you know, like pop songs and stuff like this. But the musicality is incredible, as was, you know, Ian Jury. Was Ian Jury a singer? I'm not sure. He was more of a lyricist, but the band behind him were absolutely killing. Um, in later years as a teacher, I actually taught Norman's nephew, which was absolutely amazing. But uh, as a little hats off to that, because we mentioned it in yesterday's lessons last night, when you lot were shredding, I was up transcribing away. And I've just uploaded a full transcription of, of Norman Watt Roy playing uh, Hit Me With A Rhythm Stick. Um, or something like that, I can't remember it. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's all there. So um, if you want some new materials away from these lessons, just want to go and do some contemporary bass playing, and I'm afraid sight reading practice because there is no tablature on my transcriptions. Um, in the magazines there is, but that's because, you know, editorial <laughs> uh, dictatorship says, yes, you must be tablature uh, tap friendly. But on the stuff that I put up, there's no tab. Um, and then uh where do we go well um once we got that so you can go let me just get my head straight um ashdown's done b stock's done uh once we've done that transcription for hit me with your rhythm stick is up it's live right now on the with bass in mind facebook page that's me online as a teacher um we got a big day today. Um, Paul, you're a brave man. Paul's just put in the comments, back for my fifth lesson. Awesome. Please, thank you for hanging out. Really enjoyed the first four, even though this is only my the base for one week. He's only been playing for one week. Paul, you're nuts. Um, today is going to be... Do you know what? Today is going to be one of the best foundations you're ever going to have. But by about five o'clock this afternoon, you're going to be absolutely wasted. Okay, so... <laughs> But it's all right. It's okay. I got you back. So that's good. Now, let me tell you about today's schedule. Bam, there it is. We are going to look into some, dare I say, it's like a rude word, jazz. Okay. Um, we're going to do some jazz harmony and theory today. But 
it's not going to be some crazy rocket science playing John Coltrane licks all over the place. It's going to be functional practice methodologies so that when you guys kind of sit down and you first start to encounter jazz standards or any sort of you know progressions of that nature, you're going to go, oh, okay, I can see that now. All right, so we've got some insights on that now. That's it. And I'm going to give you a cool exercise that I want you to work on for the next hour. Um, we'll talk about that in a second because you lot owe me some videos because I've not seen many going up, all right? So we'll talk about that in a second. Then there's going to be a slight change to the running order. The reason is, is because I want the lessons to coincide with each other. The second lesson today, which is going to be at one o'clock, is going to be on triad permutations. Now, anybody that did the harmonization yesterday, they all recognize that that is something we hit on triads and harmonize in the major scale so if we do it that now that also coincides with this first lesson okay which is going to be on the gershwin changes rhythm changes that's what we're going to be doing in a second all right so that's those then um at three o'clock we're going to be doing um scale extensions okay that was one of the requests from you guys can't remember who put that in. i think carl put that in. i could i'm not sure i want to say it was a carl of some sort i really should put the names down and give these guys shouts outs for everyone that's uh, asked for the lessons. Because don't forget, you were the guys that requested all this. I've merely put it into like a little mini course to help you, you know, get through the weekend. So um, we're going to do extensions. Now, extensions is kind of a, a, a weird one for bass players because a lot of us, you know, play the bass. But sometimes you can create some really nice textures on the bass. Here you go, I'll give you an example. By playing a thing called extensions. Hear that? It's kind of some really cool little notes up in the up in the gods. That are not quite as rudimentary as the triads. So we're going to talk about extensions. That's going to be at uh, three o'clock. And then at five o'clock, we've actually got a lecture. Um, Mario, you're online. I saw you pop up a minute. Mario, everyone, you can name and shame Mario. Uh, he's the coolest German I know from Hamburg. Uh, but Mario, uh, his request was, I don't know anything about Latin bass. Um, so we're going to do some work on Latin bass. I'm going to get you playing claves, uh, one and two bar syncopated some buyers. Just give you a little lowdown to, to get those things happening. Um, so that's kind of our day today. So we've got cycle of force, rhythm changes. That's now. Um, then after that, we've got a load of permutations around the cycle of force. That means you've got an hour or two some practice, and then we've got a second le lesson on it where it's associated anyway. Um, that's going to bring those two things together. Then we've got extensions, which is kind of adding to that, and then... Last lesson of the day uh, will be uh, a load of Q&A stuff uh, as well as a load of stuff on Latin bass. That's good. Andy's just popped in as well. Good morning, Andy. I hope you're all well. So that's all good. Right. So where are we going to go? Let's get started. Let's talk about chord progressions. Um, you know, we spoke about this a little bit yesterday, didn't we? We said about things like 251s, 1625s. And all of this stuff came from harmonizing the major scale. So do you remember we said, um, and again, all of yesterday's lessons are in Ashdown's threads. Okay, so if you want to go back, watch those, because I'm going to continually jockey between the two hours to reference things that were done yesterday and reference things that were done today. Um, we did one lesson, which was on the harmonization of the major scale. And this was where off of each note of the major scale, you can play a triad. Now I'm hoping that the faithful that have been with me since yesterday, all of you guys will be able to go, yeah, got that down, Phil. I'm all happy with that, okay. Um, well, this is now where we're gonna take that to the next level. When you harmonize a major scale, okay, um, when, we, uh, when we play the major scale, we produce different types of chord progressions, okay? Now, you might go and listen to, say, um, Etta James, At Last, which is, At Last. That's predominantly a one, six, two, five. How many times have you guys heard a song on the radio and you've gone, that sounds just like a Beatles song? Or you've gone, hey, that song that I just heard there, that sounds just like, this song or this song, it's the same chord progression, right? Um, that's because in 
major harmony. There's only a certain amount of chord progressions that really work. And it all boils down to this wonderful Latin word called cadence. Okay. Now, a cadence in Latin means to fall, like a waterfall. Okay. So whenever you play a chord, if I play this chord, for instance, just for instance, it creates a certain amount of tension that wants the chord to go to there. All right. That's it. So it's a direction. Chords want to move in a certain direction, in a certain way. Some chords, when you put them next door to each other, they don't want to move. And it's because the tensions within them, they're not sympathetic to one another. So, for instance, this chord, which is a five chord, wants to go to this chord. Five to one. They call that a perfect cadence. This guy wants to go to this guy. That's a plagal cadence, okay? Um, so there's all names. This is, this is harmony and theory that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, but when you start talking about that horrible word, jazz, okay, <laughs> okay, uh, which is actually an awesome word, but there, there's the, the, one of the things that people start to touch on in that is they all keep talking to you about two, five, ones. Okay. What's that? Well, a two, five, one, when we did the harmonization of the major scale, the chord that resides on the second degree was minor. This is your notes from yesterday, yeah? So it was a second degree was minor. Then the fifth degree was major. This is just a triad, guys. I'm not trying to freak you out. And then the one chord was major. That was our two, five, one. Now, um, that chord progression is pretty much the backbone to 90% of jazz. It really is. And there'll be jazz purists that are going, how dare you? But whatever. Um, if you get a copy of the real book, okay, I can't use it right now. It's used, It's actually propping up my laptop. <laughs> okay, but if you get a copy of the real book, I think there's 484 standards in there, something like that, jazz standards. This is, you know, Duke Ellington, Miles Davis, all those guys. And 90% of those songs have got a 2-5 movement in it or a 2-5-1 movement in it. They really have, okay? Um, and you can start to understand why when you trace the timeline back. First of all, let's talk about jazz, all right? Um, it works quite simply. It really does. Although it's quite difficult to understand and you have to get your head inside all of the different chords and that sort of stuff, um, what we actually get is this. We have a starting point, all right, and a destination. That's it. Okay, here's my starting point. And here's my destination. Two completely different notes. That note, uh, and that note. Okay, starting point and destination. Now what happens is as different to like a pop song or, you know, a, 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 a contemporary record like Ian Jury and the Blockheads, okay, uh, what happens is the chord progression cycles. It goes through these changes that eventually get to our destination. That's it. Starting point, destination, round the houses, and eventually you get to the destination. Okay, here's G. Here's an F minor. What? Yes, it's an F minor. Okay, watch what happens. Sounds all uh, crikey, what's going on? Very complex. Wait. Check it out. Right at the end there, did you hear the resolution? It all of a sudden it sounded sweet. It sounded like everything came together. This was my starting note. This is my finished note. If I play those two notes together, it's gonna sound ghastly, okay? Um, but here we go. Oh, but the F was my starting note and G was the resolution. That was going to be my one chord. That's the final part. I played that note. I need to get to that note. And I just cycled around loads and loads of changes until I got there. Okay. Here it is again. Just listen. This is my resolution. G. Okay. I'm going to play loads and loads of chords and I'm going to get there from here.
There you go. In a nutshell, that's jazz. Okay, that's what it really is. Um, so starting point, loads and loads of chords, destination. And then what you do is you just keep repeating that format. Now, um, if you go back today, you know, we've got some wonderful, innovative players. We've got guys like Chick Career, We've got Jeff Berlin. Um, we've got wonderful composers uh, and musicians, you know, from Uzeb with Alain Caron, uh, you know, right through to all of Yannick Buzdali stuff that he's doing with Mike Stern right now. Killing players. If we go back in time, we need to get the 70s and we've got, we want Miles and Tutu. So, uh, you know, Miles Davis and his work with um, like Marcus Miller, all those guys. And then we go before that. And then, uh, you know, we get things like a kind of blue modal jazz. That's Cannibal Adderley, Paul Chambers and, and uh, you know, Coltrane Davis again, all that sort of stuff going on there. And then we get into this reign where we go, right, these are the first jazz tunes. Um, where did they draw influence from? And this is where you can actually start looking at sort of progressions and noticing a few things. Now, the guy that we can kind of start to point a finger at a little bit and talk about his changes and how they influenced, you know, the 20th century jazz uh, and, and improvisational world is a chap called George Gershwin. Now, you guys will know Gershwin uh, because of things like um, uh, Porgy and Bess. You also know it uh, from um, I Got Rhythm. You know, I got rhythm, I got music, I got that, that old swinging tune from the 30s. Now, Gershwin actually died very young. He was not only about 37, uh, uh, but he was a composer. And I Got Rhythm, the B section to I Got Rhythm is now what commonly gets referred to as the rhythm changes, okay? Okay, and what's the big deal? That section of that song was what was used to create literally hundreds, hundreds of jazz standards. We're talking Solar, we're talking Ladybird, we're talking Tune Up, we're talking Satin Doll, Duke Ellington, you know, da 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 all those great tunes. They've all got rhythm changes present. So if you start to analyze the actual chord progressions, you will see these rhythm changes. So if I can get you aware of the rhythm changes, even if you're like Paul and you're just starting out, straight away you're like, yeah, this is cool. Actually, when I look at big standards like Solar, like Four, like Tune Up, Lady Bird, and all the other I mentioned, you're going to see rhythm changes, and that is going to help us play around them. That's cool. Okay. So now we're aware of it. So all of our big innovative, the guys that wrote the book on jazz, they were heavily influenced by the rhythm changes. The rhythm changes are the B section to the tune I Got Rhythm. That's your first notes. Okay, so now let's talk about, let's talk about where we go from there. Let's actually talk about the rhythm changes because this is the bit where you go, oh, cool. And this is where it becomes a really, really awesome exercise on the bass. Do you remember right at the beginning of today's lecture, we spoke about cadences. We said, if you play a 2-5, it wants to go to a 1 chord. Okay? You go 2 minor, 5 dominant, and that creates a perfect cadence. This is a chord progression. 2, 5. Yeah, I got that. Thanks, Phil. And it wants to go to 1. There it is. Okay, well, in this example, the bass notes for those movements were A. It was an A minor 7 chord. Then it went to D. And then it went to G, A, D, G. Now, the distance between each of those notes, A to D and D to G, they're all fourths. Now, fourth on the bass is easy to play. Playing A, fret five on the string four, it's the same fret on the next string. That's the interval of a fourth. Simple as that, okay? So, there's our fourth. And if you do a fourth up from that, you get the G, that's the two, that's the five, and that's the one. Amazing, so two, fine, move up, five, yeah, fine, one. You just play the two, five, one, you just played the biggest backbone to jazz. It really is, okay, at the most simplest level. But I want you to understand, this is really cool, because this gives birth to the cycle of fourths. Okay, right, remember, they're just fourths. Now, what the cycle of fourths is, is this really cool thing you can use, whereby if you start on a note 
and keep stacking intervals of fourth, eventually you come back to where you started from. It's like standing here, and if I go due east and keep walking forever and a day, eventually I'm going to come back here because the earth is not flat. Okay, I'm going to go around the grove and come back. Well, that's what the cycle of fourths is. Check this out. Watch this, okay? C, upper fourth from C, F. Upper four from F, B flat. Upper four from B flat, E flat. Upper four from E flat, A flat. Upper four from A flat, D flat. Upper four from there, G flat. Then B, then E, then A, then D, then G. And after 12 movements, I return to C. You see that? So I literally went, started on C, into four or fourth, into four or four, 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 and then I came back to C. So if I get you practicing exercises around the cycle of fourths, not only are you understanding the cycle of fourths, you can use that information directly with two five on chord progressions, which is about 500 jazz standards. You can see where I'm going with this. This is cool. Okay, right, so that's good. Okay, <clears throat> now, the documents that I'm going to post, if you guys, um, once this is finished, if I will share this video um, on the With Base In Mind home, homepage, and I'll put a couple of PDFs there. You can download these PDFs. It will be support stuff uh, that will, will help you get through the lesson, okay? First of all, I want you to... Do the cycle of force with me. Start on C for me. C is fret eight here on string four, okay? Now from C, go down a fourth to F. We've gone C to F. Now, we're gonna follow a pattern all the way down the base. C to F, a fourth from there is B flat. That's fret six, okay? So you've gone C, upper fourth, F. Upper fourth, B flat. Upper fourth, A flat, okay? so. Eight, eight, six, six. That's not hard. You can't tell me that's difficult. All right. Now from there, drop down to string four, playing A flat, which is fret four, going to D flat, which is another fret four. So you've gone eight, eight, six, six, four, four. Okay. I think you can handle that. All right. So that's all good. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. Right. From there, another fourth. It goes down to G flat, F sharp, it's ambiguous, call it what you like, uh, but it's fret two, <laughs> right? Okay. And then I want you to move to B on fret seven. That's just another fourth, but we're going to specifically move to B. Now, if you follow that pattern straight away, guys, what you've probably noticed is that you've gone between the dots the whole way down the base. That's the easiest way to recognize that cycle, okay? Obviously, we're against the clock, so we need to get this out very quickly. So, between the dots, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. Okay, right. Now, when we get there, we're going to move up to on the dots, okay? Fret seven on B, right? Now, B, upper fourth to E. It's the same thing. Move down to A. You're on a dot and then upper fourth to D. So you've gone fret seven to fret seven, fret five to fret five. Do you see what's happening here? Yeah, all between the dots, and then hit a G. Right. It's early in the day. <laughs> it was Saturday night yesterday. I'm pretty sure we probably all had a few glasses of wine, maybe a couple of gins, um, and it's a little bit little bit heavy. It's like, okay, I'm dude. It's only half 11 in the morning, BST. Um, so... Just slow down a little bit and do it again. Cycle of fourths is reminiscent of the Gershwin changes. We're going to talk about that in a second, okay? I just need you to get this pattern down now. Everything between the dots. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. That's eight, eight, six, six, four, four, two. If you want to do it in tablature, that's not difficult. You could have done that day one of playing the bass, as Dave will tell you in the thread. Now, when we've done that, you then go up to fret seven, and on fret seven, you're going to do the same movement, B, E, A, D, G, which is seven, seven, five, five, four, okay? 
The next note is C, which is where we started, there. So this means we've got this wonderful circle that we can just keep going round and round and round and round all day. Like so. This is a cycle of fourths. You can see I'm starting to get a bit dizzy. But what's great about this cycle is that if you practice around the cycle of fourths, you start to do a couple of things. The first thing is, is that any phrase that you play, it proves that you can play it in all 12 keys. So if I did this. What I'm doing is I'm just taking... I did that little phrase, boom, ba -da -da -da, but I just took it around the whole cycle and I just played it in all 12 keys. That's amazing. That's a fantastic exercise, okay? Cycle of Force is good for that. The other thing is, as you already know, two five ones were built upon to this movement. So although I'm practicing this pattern, I'm actually practicing two five one movements, which is 400 odd standards, which we already spoke about. Okay, this is awesome. Um, so what do I now need you to do? This is now the actual exercise. Okay, let's just take stock, take a breath, halfway through the hour. Okay, so it's, <laughs> we can chill out. Spyros has just come on. I don't know if you guys know Spyros. Spyros is just an absolute dude um, that I know. I teach him one to one with Bass in Mind. And he is like ready to pounce. Whenever you do an exercise, he's like, yeah. What should we do now? Let's do it now. And he gets he gets really excited. So just just ignore him. <laughs> okay, right. So right here we go. Let's let's take a step back. Early jazz. Today it's got a little bit full on. Okay, but early swing jazz. When you see those standards like Ladybird, Tune Up, Satin Doll, or Stu Kellington, a couple of Miles Davis tunes there. Um, there is a cycle that's present in all the music, okay? And that cycle is what's referred to as the cycle of fourths. Um, the cycle of fourths allows you to start on one place and go around a whole cycle and come back to the original place by just stacking intervals of fourth, nothing else. If you start anywhere on your bass, guys, any note I care, I don't care what note, that note there, if I keep stacking fourths, in 12 fourths time, I'm gonna come back to that note. Okay, that's how it works. Now, Gershwin used this cycle um, in the tune, I Got Rhythm. And it was so seminal that it now commonly gets referred to as the rhythm changes, okay? And that is what was the basis for all of that early Miles Davis, all those Miles Davis tunes, all those Chet Baker tunes and Coltrane tunes and um, yeah, Duke Ellington, Satin Doll, great example. Loads of two fives everywhere. So what I want you guys to do as, you know, foundation, I've never played jazz before in my life, is just to be aware that there's a cycle that keeps going round and round and round. And then when you're ready, you just get off the cycle and that's the end of the song. It really is that easy, okay? got to do a bit of work between now and then to be able to perform it but that's the general you know uh, premise of how it all works what i've just done is i've just taught you a cycle of fourths okay c f b flat e flat a flat d flat g flat now onto the naturals b e a d g back to c there you go c started and finished on the same note when this is done, I will share this video on the With Bass In Mind page, and I will give you two documents to support the cycle of fourth, so you guys can go and practice it. They're actually extracts from my second book, uh, Core Tone Concepts, okay? So you can just have that for free. It'll just back up the lessons, okay? Now, this is what Gershwin did, and this is what's really cool. He played two types of arpeggio around that cycle. He did this, ready? Minor, seventh, dominant seven. Minor seventh, dominant seven. Minor seven, dominant seven. Minor seven, 
dominant seven, minus seven, dominant seven, minus seven, dominant seven, minus seven, dominant seven, minus seven, dominant seven, seven, dominant seven, minus seven, dominant seven, seven, dominant seven, minus seven, stop. That's it. That's the rhythm changes. And once you've got that under your fingertips, it is going to blow everything wide open. So guess what we're doing for the next 20 minutes? Okay, right. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen. You need to play two arpeggios. That's it. All right. And we're going to alternate them. We're going to go minus seven, dominant seven, minus seven, dominant seven, minus seven, dominant seven, minus seven. That's it. Minor dominant, minor dominant, minor dominant, minor dominant. Basically until the sun sets. All right. Okay. Um, but we're not just going to go around the cycle of fourths. We're going to go minor, dominant. Now, stay in position, minor, then move to the next fourth, dominant. Stay in position, minor, next fourth, dominant. Stay in position, minor, dominant. Stay in position, minor, dominant. That's the exercise, okay? Once you've got that down, you're going to be able to apply that in so many tunes, all right? Trust me now, it's good, solid academic knowledge. So, first things we need to do. We need to differentiate between what a minor seventh arpeggio is and what a dominant seventh arpeggio is. Right, no expense spared, as always, the faithful pad of A4. Right, okay, now, a minor seventh arpeggio is, I had to think about it then, my brain is not awake, a minor third plus a major third plus a minor third. We do everything in intervals, guys, because it is academia. That is your formula for a minor seventh, for minor third plus a major third plus a minor third. And that is all you need for this first exercise. A minor third is three frets, and a major third is four frets. Find C, please, on your bass. Everyone on C? Good. This is how to play a minor seventh arpeggio. The first interval is a minor third. From that note, play E flat on the same string. So you've got C at fret three, E flat at fret six. Okay, do those two notes. C, E flat. Get that down, you're already home and dry. Okay, now, that's the minor third. Now we need to play a major third. From E flat, you're gonna put your ring finger on G at fret five of string two. That gives you a minor triad, which is what we studied in the harmonization yesterday. Okay, I think that was lesson three yesterday. Okay, so go back and check it out. Root, flat three, perfect fifth, minor triad. But we're not finished yet, are we? We've still got to put that guy on top, a minor third. We're on a G, minor third is E flat, uh, B flat, sorry, a fret three on string one. C, E flat, G, B flat. Play that shape, guys. Make sure that you can play that shape. It's actually the arpeggio that goes with the Dorian studies. We did that in lesson four yesterday, okay, when we did linear Dorian shapes. But that is our minor seventh arpeggio. Just play it a few times, get it under your fingertips. C, E flat, G, B flat. Now, notice that I gave you that, a formula. And the reason is, is because if you play that formula anywhere on your bass, you'll always produce that. Although the notes change, you know, if I do it here, I have to go E, G, B, D. Some of you guys might not be able to, you know, process the notes in the middle of the neck quick enough. It's okay. You just go minor third, major third, minor third. That's why formulas are so important. Okay. Now you can play that formula anywhere on the bass, anywhere, and you'll always produce a minor seventh arpeggio. That's cool, isn't it? We like that. So that's good. All right, now let's do our first exercise cycle of fourths. Okay. You're just going to take the minor seventh arpeggio around the cycle of fourths. I'm doing this so that you guys get comfortable with playing it. Okay. So that's good. Starting at C, fret eight on the string four. Minor third, major third, minor third. C, E flat, G. And then there's the B flat. There's our first minor seven. Okay, when we've done that, we're going to move down a fourth to F. Play the same shape. 
F, A flat, C, E flat. So we've got position one, position two. Okay, remember what we did? It was all between the dots. These are like the root notes of the arpeggio, yeah? So C minor, E flat. We go down here to B flat, which is fret six, play the same arpeggio again. And then to fret six on string three, E flat, and play the same one again. We're just following the cycle of fourths, guys. C, F, B flat, E flat. Okay, now we're going to go down to fret four, which is an A flat. Same thing again, A flat. And then a D flat. Okay, hopefully you guys have been able to keep up okay. A flat and then D flat. So we've just gone between the dots. Nothing else. Same shape, just moving it in fourths. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. And there we got down to G flat, fret two. And we go G flat, B. So minor seventh arpeggio on G flat, and then a minor seventh arpeggio on B. So all we've done is gone between the dots C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and B. But that B, we're actually going to move to fret seven on string three in a second. You're going to see why. Okay, so between the dots, C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and then down to G flat. At which point, you now go to fret seven on string four, a dot, you're on the dots now. And we're gonna do the same thing again, but this time on the dot. So you're gonna go B, upper fourth, E, then A to D. So that was fret seven on the E string, fret seven on the uh, A string. Uh, fret five on the E string and fret five on the string three, the A string. And now you're going to go down to G, which is on fret three of string four. And then hey presto, the next note is C, which is where you started. How cool is that? The cycle of fourths, very, very great thing. Our first exercise was quite simply taking a minor seventh arpeggio around the cycle of fourths. This is the exercise at speed, shall we say. Starting on C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. Then on the dots, B, E, A, D, G, back to C. Now, remember what we're doing here. The minor seventh arpeggio is that which is the two chord. The two five one movement is the Gershwin rhythm change. It was two fives of what was used in rhythm changes. Um, and that's what's been used in a billion jazz songs. So what we're doing here is we're practicing a rudiment, which is going to be in almost every song that we play. That's very cool. Okay. Unfortunately, I've done this quite a few times. <laughs> so what happens is that I want you guys to be able to play around the cycle of fourths and get this so that it's absolutely ridiculous, like <laughs> going at nine million miles an hour. But you can play the cycle of fourths literally with your... Can I do it? Eyes closed. Oh, no, I actually can. Yeah, don't... I, I'm surprised I've got a social life. I can actually... <laughs> okay, right. So there's the cycle of fourths. Minor seventh. But we have a second arpeggio, okay? Second arpeggio that we need to work on is the dominant seventh. Okay, so let me give you the formula. Dominant seventh is slightly different. It's a major third plus a minor third plus another minor third. Remember, major third is four frets, minor third is three frets. There is the dominant formula. Major third plus minor third plus minor third. Major, minor, minor. This is our second shape. Let's just get acquainted with playing a dominant arpeggio. Middle finger on C. Okay, make sure it's your middle finger. Remember on the minor we started with our index finger and went to the little finger, ring finger, index. Now we're starting on our middle finger. Try not to be rude. Okay, right, so we're going to play C first of all. 
Then index finger is going to play E on fret two of string two. C to E. That's the major third. Then we're going to play a minor third, which will take us to G. Major third plus a minor third. All right. Next one is then from G to B flat, which is fret three on string one. Okay. C, E, G, B flat. That is our dominant seventh arpeggio. Notice that the root, the fifth, and the seventh are exactly the same as minor seven. It's only one note that's changed. Okay. So minor seven, C, E flat, G, B flat. Dominant seven, C, E, G, B flat. All right. But I'm following those formulas. And that stops me getting confused by all the notes. Major third is four frets, minor third is three frets. Guess what we're going to do? Yeah, you got it. You're going to start, you're going to go around the cycle of fourths using dominant arpeggios. Now, again, this is just a warm up. Um, the main, I'm afraid, the main uh, lesson is about to hit in a second. So, Using dominant arpeggio, going around a cycle of force. Start on C, fret A. Remember, between the dots, all right? There's our first dominant arpeggio. Then from C, we move down to F, the fourth. Fret eight on string three and play another dominant arpeggio. Then down to fret six on string four, which is a B flat. There's that arpeggio again. And then on to E flat. So you see the cycle, yeah? Once we've done that, we're going to drop down to A flat. And then play D flat. So A flat's at fret 4, D flat, fret 4, string uh, 3. Before we hit a G flat, which is going to be at fret 2. So we've just gone all between the dots the whole way down. Okay, now move to B on fret seven of string four. Now we're going to be on the dots. Yeah? So B, move up a fourth, E. Move down a fourth to A. And then D before playing G. And then back to C, which is where we started. The complete cycle. A little demonstration without mistake. <laughs> okay, there's our two family members. Right, let's just take stock, guys. Um, thank you, first of all, for bearing with me. It's the first one. I had a little bit of a car crash at the beginning of this lesson. This lesson's annoyed me a little bit because I was trying to post the materials in the thread and then uh, it was Facebook was like, no, can't do that, I'm afraid. Uh, so that kind of it upset my flow a little bit. But uh, we're settling down now. This is good. So that's good. Let's just recap what we are doing in this first lesson. Um, we are talking about rhythm changes. That's the, the little nuance that goes with it, okay? Rhythm changes is um, the B section to the George Gershwin tune, I Got Rhythm. Now, um, the changes that are in there are of two five movements, which is a minor seven going to dominant seven around a cycle of fourths. Okay. And that chord progression was the basis, the seminal thing that influenced all of that early jazz. And you can see it. You can see it in um, standards like Solar. You can see it in Ladybird. You can see it in Tune Up. You can see it in um, Satin Doll. These are just off the top of my head really good jazz standards that you're going to play again and again and again uh you see it in minority okay there's another good one there um which is just a cycle of fourths you play one chord progression another chord progression and a cycle of fourths remember what a cycle of fourths did we have a starting point and a finish and it just allows you to get to that point and that's basically what jazz is you just go around the and eventually you you get to the end um our first exercises today was I wanted you to take a minor seven arpeggio and be able to play it around the cycle of fourths. That gets your head around where all of the notes are and also how the cycle works. 
and then when you start playing a load of jazz tunes, you will see the cycle of fourths. If you can see the cycle of fourths, you've just learned 300 songs. It's as easy as that. That was exercise one. Exercise two was to then take a dominant seventh arpeggio around the same cycle. So you would go C, if B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, then move to B on the dots, A, D, G, and back to our beginning. Remember, if you think of these arpeggios as formulas, you don't get caught out by the notes because the distances, like scale formulas, are the same. Minor seven arpeggios are a minor seven plus a major, I'm sorry, minor third plus a major third plus a minor third. Dominant sevens, major third, minor third, minor third. Play those formulas from anywhere on your bass, you will always produce those two arpeggios. It's flawless, it will never let you down, okay? So make sure you know these formulas. Right, but this isn't quite Gershwin changes just yet because the next exercise is the one. This is one that's taken us 45 minutes to get to, okay? And this is what I really want you to work on over the coming hour, okay? You're not just gonna go all minor, and you're not just gonna play all dominant. You're gonna alternate, you're gonna go minor dominant, minor dominant, minor dominant, minor dominant. But there's a twist. You're not gonna just go minor move dominant, Move, minor, move, dominant, move, minor, do, do. You're not just going to keep plowing through the cycle. You're going to do it in stages. Watch this. C minor 7, F dominant. That's a 2-5, alternating. But now before, I don't just move straight on to B flat. I'm going to stay on F. I'm then going to play minor, then B flat dominant, B flat minor, E flat dominant, E flat minor, A flat dominant, A flat minor, D flat dominant, D flat minor, G flat dominant, G flat minor, B dominant. You see that? So it doesn't just keep going one move, next one move, next one move, next one. It goes minor dominant. Then that dominant chord turns into minor and goes minor dominant. Then that dominant chord turns into the minor and goes minor dominant. That dominant turns into the minor, minor dominant. And that's the alternating. And that is rhythm changes. Okay. That is the exact, you know, <laughs> that is the exact approximation. There you go. That's the most hypocritical sentence ever. Okay. Right. We're going to start on C. Okay. Let's do this together, please, guys. Remember, for now, we'll just do the first half. Get it in here. Starting on C. Play C minor 7 for me, please. Okay, now the chord moves to F. Play F dominant. So you've got to kind of play one shape and then move to the middle finger for the next shape. Okay, so C minor first one. F dominant. Now stay on F. Play F minor. So you've got C minor, F dominant. Change to minor. Now move around the cycle to B flat, dominant. So you went minor, dominant, minor, dominant, yeah? Minor, dominant, minor, dominant. I should be saying minor seven, shouldn't I? Good, now on B flat, play a minor seven, E flat dominant. Then you stay on the dominant chord, make the E flat minor seven, down to A flat dominant. Stay on A flat, make that A flat minor seven, and then D flat dominant. D flat minor to G flat dominant. G flat minor <laughs> to B dominant. B minor seven to E dominant. E minor 7 to A dominant. A minor 7 to D dominant. D minor 7 to G dominant. Guess what's going to happen? G minor 7 to C dominant. We've come back to the beginning. At speed, minor, dominant, minor, dominant, minor, 
dominant minor dominant minor dominant minor dominant minor dominant minor ah it's quick dominant minor dominant minor dominant ah no dominant minor dominant okay there you go so there's the cycle of force rhythm changes minor dominant minor dominant minor dominant minor dominant minor dominant all day i want you to practice that until you can literally I need to blind, I can't blind my phone. Here we go. Minor, dominant, minor, dominant. <laughs> minor, dominant, minor, dominant, minor, dominant, minor, dominant, minor, dominant, minor, ah, where's B? Uh, dominant. Okay, yeah, you can, <laughs> try and do it with your eyes closed. Literally, it's metaphorical. Don't take it seriously. Cycle of fourths. Let's close off the session. This first lesson, first of the day, we're all a bit sleepy, okay? Um, but we're trying to make sure that we are able to play around the cycle of fourths. In the very first early jazz tunes that came out, I got rhythm, George Gershwin's uh, tune. The B section was entitled The Rhythm Changes. This was a series of two, five, minor seventh to dominant chords going around a cycle of fourths, okay? Today, you've learned the cycle of fourths. You've also learned minor dominant, minor dominant, minor dominant, minor dominant, minor dominant, those two arpeggios. If you can get that exercise down, okay, I'm telling you now, you've just literally learned 400 jazz songs, okay? I'm not kidding, all right? Because that, that little cycle and progression is in so much. I've already given you a load of examples like Ladybird, Solar, Tune Up, um, uh, satin doll, uh, just sort of a minority. That's another one. Uh, there's loads of them. Just, they just keep literally just turn a page and go, pop there it is two, five. You can see it. So if you can go two, five, you've already got it. And you can walk it. There you go. that walking base. Just so you're not petios. It is an absolutely formidable exercise that will give you that absolutely solid foundation, okay, to get things moving with your jazz playing, all right? So that's good. So if you can recognize cycle of fourths, you'll be able to see it in all these tunes, and you've been able to see, A, the cycle of fourths is a two, five, one. Rhythm changes, two, five, two, five, two, five, two, five, two, five, the whole way around it. I want you to practice that for the next hour, okay? If you're with me for this lesson, be with me for the next lesson, okay? The next lesson's at one o'clock BST, and we're going to do the cycle of fourths again. But we're going to do triads around it, okay? That's a slight tweak to the running order this week, okay? So uh, I've changed that purposely because it will reflect this lesson, all right? So that's good. So next one is going to be an hour. Go away, practice your cycle of fourths, minor dominant, 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 minor dominant around that. That's Gershwin, that's rhythm changes, and you're going to see that in a billion tunes, okay, which is going to be absolutely wicked, okay. Um, guys, I'm Phil Mann. Uh, if you love what I'm doing, uh, you want to hang out, go to With Bass in Mind. That's my music page here on uh, Facebook and on Instagram. With Bass in Mind, I put up some awesome transcriptions. This morning, I put up a transcription of Ian Jury and the Blockheads, uh, Hit Me With Your Rhythm Stick. Do you remember? Um, well, that was messy. It is a 16th note workout. That is free. You can get on there, uh, download it, uh, and study it to your heart's content. You're going to have a while of a time doing that, okay? Go and do it. It's going to be brilliant, okay? Now, um, so go and check that out. If you want to get any further assistance with your playing, you can book one-to-one -one private Skype lessons with me. It's just like this, but interactive. Mario's online right now. BB's on, like, <laughs> BB the bass is online. That's no, good. Um, those guys, I tell you, they're having one-to-one -one lessons with me. I saw Andy on here as well this morning. So there's a few of my guys that have logged in today, which is great. Good morning, chaps. Welcome. It's the man clan. Um, but let's not forget why we're doing this. Guys, This these whole series of sessions are a massive thank you to Ashdown Ashdown Engineering, uh, Mark Gooday and the team, because they last week raised £160,000 
for the English National Health Service, NHS, um, which is absolutely spectacular. What a wonderful, wonderful achievement. Loads of money that we can put forward to fight this goddamn virus, which is kind of enveloping the world right now. Um, show some appreciation for Ashdown, guys. Um, support great British companies. Um, right now, there's a B stock page that the guys have put up. This is loads of refurbished equipment, pedals, bases, amps. It's all up there at really great discounted prices. So if you want to go and grab yourself a bargain, Ashdown Engineering, B stock, go and do it. Why am I here? Everyone knows me from Scott Bass Lessons and all that sort of stuff. Um, a bass player magazine, bass guitar magazine. I've got a tedious connection to Ashdown, and that is my very first ever endorsement was from Trace Elliott, which was Mark Gooday's preceding company. And they supplied my back amps when I went, uh, my back line when I went around Europe doing a big YouTube band. Uh, so that's all good. If you've been with me for five lessons, you know that because I've told you that in every single lesson. Um, guys, you've got an hour of practice. Go and do minor seventh and dominant sevenths. First of all, just the minor seven arpeggio around the cycle of fourths, like this. Get it down. Then do the dominant seventh around the cycle of fourths. A little bit tricky on the finger in that one. Get it nice and smooth. When you've done that, then you alternate. And that is Gershwin changes. That's rhythm changes. Minor, dominant. Minor, dominant. Minor seven, sorry, dominant. Flat wrist, minor, dominant. Minor, dominant. Minor, dominant. It's a little bit tricky, this one. Minor, dominant. Get that down, and then you'll be ready for the next lesson in an hour. Now, I'm telling you off. This is supposed to be the live Ashdown sessions. It's the lockdown sessions. It's a community thing, okay? Video yourself doing some of these exercises and post them in the comments, guys, okay? Genuinely, honestly, let's do this. Let's get involved, and we can see everyone playing and doing the exercises and in this time of lockdown, we can all be in it together, which is going to be brilliant. Guys, I'm Phil Man. You've been awesome. Go and get some coffee. I'll see you in one hour. And we're back with the cycle of fourths doing triad permutations and stuff like that. See you very shortly.